storm. He claims faith found him. They were with their teeth tearing off hunks of me. They did worse things than that. A terrifying descent into death and darkness that began in the City of Lights. I took a group of students and my wife to Europe for an art tour. Spring 1985, Howard was a 38-year-old college art professor, department head, and devout atheist. I'm ashamed of this, but I really thought that um, religious people were um, simple-minded or um, just completely living in a fantasy world. He didn't care about life's purpose, only pleasure. Then you die and it's over. Paris was to be the piece de resistance until a nagging stomach ache suddenly intensified. Pain was the most acute pain I'd ever experienced in my life. A gastrointestinal perforation with corrosive digestive acid spilling into the abdominal cavity. Oh, I needed surgery within a few hours or I'd be dead. Howard's condition was critical, but the hospital staff couldn't locate a doctor to prescribe pain medication, let alone operate. Because it was a Saturday and nobody was aware of it, there was no surgeon at the surgical hospital. Ten hours later, he was ready to die. So we said our goodbyes and um, I closed my eye and went unconscious. Then something unexpected happened. He woke up, feeling more alive than ever, looking at his dead body and his wife crying. So these people were outside the room calling me by name. Come with us, Howard. They um, said, hurry up, Howard. come with us, let's go, we know all about you. So I thought Howard. that they were going to take me to my surgery. But he says there was no surgery. On, Instead, Howard. he was led into a never-ending, dark, on, damp ready. space. I was terrified, so I said, I'm not going any further with you. And then they began to push and shove. He says dozens, maybe hundreds, attacked, biting, ripping, tearing him apart, just for fun. Then they did things to humiliate me and diminish me, which is part of it that I don't talk about because it's too gross. Was this hell? I don't think I was in hell. I think I was being processed, sort of like um, this was my indoctrination to become like them. And that's when he heard it. He says an inner voice telling him to pray. Memory came to me, um, very, very vivid, of myself sitting in a Sunday school classroom singing Jesus Loves Me. He says the creatures became agitated and began to back off. Out of desperation, I called out into the darkness, Jesus, please save me. And when I did that, a tiny light appeared in the darkness and got very, very bright. Within the light, Howard claims Jesus appeared and healed his wounds. And I was filled with his love for me, which is um, wonderfully impossible to describe. Soon, he says, guardian angels also arrived to watch his life in review. He says earthly achievements meant nothing here, while every human interaction was consequential. Episode by episode where I had either loved or failed to love. However, he felt them all rejoice the night he had comforted his sister after a fight with their dad. Her and I put my arm around her and, and held her really tight while she cried. And I um, held her all night long until um, she fell asleep. My, my angels and Jesus really approved of that that simple act of kindness. Determined to change, he asked, what is the best religion? He said, the best religion is the one that brings you closest to God. And the most important message? He said, love the person that you're with. And I said, okay, I'll do that. Now what do you want me to do? And he said, no, that's it. Love the person that you're with. Family, friends, strangers, and enemies alike without judgment. And that's exactly what Howard says he did upon his return even when his wife divorced him and colleagues didn't believe his story. People um, really hated me because of my new values. My, all my old friends dropped me. Um, some members of my family um, couldn't stand um, my new values and my new faith. Undeterred, Howard quit his job, worked at a soup kitchen, then graduated from the seminary. A religious conversion that also greatly influenced his artwork. This is the first painting I did after my experience. Illustrations of the hellish and heavenly journey are hung throughout his northern Kentucky home, which he shares with his new wife, Marcia, a woman who's never doubted him. Why would he give up a full tenured professorship 
and his retirement. Logically, it, it doesn't make sense. And yet, it's so powerful that that's what he was called to do and that's what he did. Howard's also written a book titled My Descent Into Death and 30 years later continues to tell his story to anyone who will listen. I can't save anyone that's between them and God, but hopefully um, through love and kindness you can make an impression on people which will give them um, you know, an opportunity to rethink what their beliefs are about. Mm -hmm.